Number one, the pair of numbers you're searching for should add to negative five. They should multiply to negative 24. Okay? We've got negative eight and three. Does it check out? Yeah. Thumbs up. Do you remember we noticed before, if this last one is negative, this last number, the constant, one has to be negative and one has to be positive. Because if both are positive, you will get plus signs everywhere. If both are negative, you'll still get a plus sign here because they cancel each other out. Right? So, looks perfect. Well done, right? Is there a correct way to write it? Like, are you meant to put you the small one this first? one here? That's a good question. Doesn't matter which way we put them. What is the operation that's in between the brackets? It's implied but not written. It's multiplication, right? And because multiplication, uh, at least in the areas that we're working with, it uh, doesn't matter which order you do them in, therefore it's not that big a deal. Okay? Uh, so if you did x plus 3 first, that's fine as well. x plus 6, x plus 1? Yeah. Thumbs up. Excellent. And last one, negative 5 and 6, do they add up to 1? Yes. yes. Do they multiply to negative 30? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Now, by the way, I'm just going to tell you a mental strategy I used to use. I sometimes got confused as to which one is which. Which one do I do that adds and which one multiplies? Just have a look at the kinds of questions that you get. Do you notice, in fact, in this case, well, except for the last one, see these numbers here, 5, 7, in this case, 1, right? What kinds of numbers multiply together to give 5, 7, and 1? Answer... Uh, 1 and 5, 1 and 7, 1 and 1, okay? That doesn't work. You often get numbers that are prime, like 5, 7, uh, 11, right? You get them in the middle. You're not going to find factors for prime numbers, uh, at least not very often. Whereas these numbers on the end, look at this, 24, 6, 30. These are numbers that are easy to factorize, right? So it's clearly something times something most likely went into Guru and making those numbers. Fantastic. Well done. Now what I'd like you to do is, to all three of those questions, I want you to draw a, um, a line uh, or a circle, and I want you to highlight this first term, okay? In this case, or in all of these cases, it's actually the same. Okay? So I want to point out two things here. Firstly, do you notice in a quadratic expression, you've got terms with uh, different powers, right? This is a power of 2. There's a power hiding here as well. What is that power? It's a 1. In fact, there's even a power hiding on that last number, the 24. What power is there? There is a power of 1 on the 24. However, I'm actually, and I didn't say this very clearly, I'm actually looking at the x's. Do you see that? x squared, x to the power of 1. This is x to the power of zero. 0, which is 1, which is why it's just a number. Okay? Now, because the x squared term is the biggest power, it's important. We call it the leading term. The leading term. That's why you most often see it at the front, but sometimes they'll write it at the back if it's negative or something like that. When the leading term has a coefficient of 1, see that? 1, 1, 1. It's just hiding there. If the leading term's coefficient is 1, we call the quadratic a monic quadratic. M-O-N-I-C. Monic. When you see the word monic, what do you think that word comes from? One, mono, like monorail, okay? Or mono, well, actually they call it unicycle, but anyway. Monohair? Uh, that's monahair, but anyway. Um, this means the kind of quadratic you've got is the nice, simplest kind you can get where that leading term has a coefficient of 1. However, as you can see, it doesn't take that much imagination to make the leading term have a different coefficient. Here's a 3, here's a 4. Okay? These aren't monic, they don't get a really fancy name. These are just called non-monic. <laughs> Original, I know. <laughs> So, dealing with monic quadratics is pretty straightforward. You're thinking of this pair of numbers you've demonstrated, you're really good at that. Okay? For non-monic ones, it's a teeny bit more complicated. Okay? There are two broad categories, which is why I've got two examples that I want to show you here. Okay? Let's have a look at the first one. It's non-monic. That leading term has a coefficient of 3. In this case, before I even start to think about it as a quadratic, 
I notice that these numbers, 3, 9, and 6, share something in common. What do they share? They share a factor of 3, which means I can take that out. So I'm going to write equals. I'm going to bring the 3 out the front, which means everything that left is left behind, I'm going to divide by 3. So how many m squareds will I have inside? M, m. Just one of them. That's how many m squareds I have. How many m's? Three of them. And what will the constant be? Two. I divided everything. That looks good. So now you can see the whole thing is not monic, but this thing in here <coughs> is. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So therefore, I can deal with this guy, the guy inside the brackets, just like I dealt with any of these. What pair of numbers will I look for? m squared plus 3m plus 2. This is an easy one. Yep. 2 and 1. So with that 3 out the front, this is just going to be m plus 2, m plus 1. And you're done. Okay? So the first category of non-monic quadratic is really a monic quadratic that's been multiplied through by a number. So you can treat it much the same way. 